Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I know it's been a while since you guys have seen my face. A lot has happened. A lot has changed. I have made a move to the West Coast, so I'm so happy to join you guys today. How are you guys? Good. Can't complain. Uh, I'm, ex- I'm excited. We haven't done a show with you in a while. What? I know. I've been keeping tabs, you know. I haven't, I haven't seen a, a real replacement, but you know, I'm definitely gonna pop in and out. Um, but I definitely wanted to kick today's show off with just one thing: rest in peace to Brandon Taylor. Um, I definitely wore my "I Can't Breathe" shirt. Um, I know this situation is affiliated with George Floyd, but I wanted to just bring some type of awareness of what we've been fighting for for months and protesting for all summer. So, for those of you who don't know, um, just one of the officers were arrested and indicted um, for first degree wound and endangerment, not first degree murder or second degree murder. Um, And so what wound and endangerment even means um, is basically just really that he was careless in the way that he um, attacked Brianna. Like he shot through her apartment wall and could have endangered others during um, him doing his job, right? And so, just a outcry, outrage from just, not just black Americans, Americans everywhere, um, completely upset with this verdict, not really shocked or surprised, just kind of let down. I think we all feel like we felt we, we failed her after months of protesting. It took 194 days for her to even um, have a, an officer arrested. And for her just to not get justice is just, just insane. Um, so I wanted to just go over some of the athletes that have been speaking up. Over the last couple of months, we've seen, um, you know, Naomi Osaka speak up and use her platform as she's, you know, continue to, to win titles and her just really advocate for these families that have experienced police brutality. We've seen CP3, LeBron James, and many other athletes use their platforms to advocate. Um, even while going through COVID and being in the bubble, these players have made um, just a conscious effort to speak up. Tobias Harris as well. You know, some of these guys were answering questions and only saying, why aren't the cops who killed Brianna Taylor arrested? And so for this to be the outcome, it's heartbreaking. Um, If you guys want to share your thoughts on kind of how you felt when you heard that verdict or you heard the charges that are being charged. Disappointment. Um, We we were um, uh, Tripp and myself and, and Sean were yesterday uh, recording an episode of Shooting the Shit. And I, I started off the show by saying that I was disappointed. I'm frustrated. Um, I think I was holding out hope for a different outcome in this particular case because of the circumstances of the case, you know. Um, just to give people, again, clarification, like Brianna Taylor was in her home sleeping. Um, her, her door was kicked in. She, they, her and her boyfriend were victims from the very beginning of this situation, and yet they were portrayed by the police and by the media as suspects when they were not suspects. The police were not there looking for Breonna Taylor. Um, and then to hear, you know, one officer being charged with, uh, you know, wanton endangerment, which basically brings no justice to Breonna Taylor or her family. Um, you know, I don't know any other word to use, but frustrated. Um, a friend of mine said we shouldn't have been surprised because just last week we heard of the settlement that the family received, which was kind of their way of softening the blow. Um, because there were no indictments coming down. We waited four and a half months for them to bring up charges on one officer that had nothing to do with the incident um, and how it would affect the Breonna Taylor and her family. So I'm extremely frustrated. You know, I said yesterday on the podcast that um, that, I, that I wasn't surprised, um, wasn't shocked because, you know, we don't, we haven't we haven't been getting that type of that type of justice. You know, this is something that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, I mean, it, it's still it's still disappointing that even with everything that's been going on in this country over the past couple of months, uh, we still couldn't get any type of real justice for Breonna Taylor. And um, you know, for for anybody who 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 has the logic of Oh well, well they gave him twelve million dollars in the lawsuit. Well, guess what? Brianna Taylor is still in the grave. So that twelve million dollars ain't bring Brianna Taylor back unless there's some some uh you know 
recovery surgery to have you can bring a person back to life that I don't know about, you know. So that's twelve million dollars. All right, yeah, you got some money in your pocket, but that that mother still lost her daughter. You know that 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 boyfriend still lost his girlfriend. Her friends and her family members they still lost someone that was you know near and dear to their heart. So you know that ain't that ain't justice. You know, getting a paycheck is, is not justice. Um, you know, I, I'm I think I'm I'm even more disappointed though. Um, in the the attorney general. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of hurts more than the fact that the the walls and the neighbors. And Breonna Taylor's uh, building got more justice than Breonna Taylor because to to have to, to 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 sit and watch a black man telling us, oh well, we, you know we don't know what's going on and the evidence and this and that, and it's and like and I and I hate to I hate to you know to say Uncle Tom and use that, that reference, but that's where it ju- it just took me to you know it took me there in that moment. Like brother, you you could at least let 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 one of your white counterparts go up there and and, and give that that news, you know what I'm saying? Like why why we always gotta you know always gotta throw the the, the black people up there to like I guess ease the blow, you know what yeah. I mean? So we could understand it more and we'll be cool. Then nah, that that that's not cool, man. The Attorney General um, Daniel Cameron um, speak. It was it it just reminds us how it's not just about us being in that position, right? And just like, we, we preach representation so much, but then it's like, okay, we have the representation, but now you are also a part of a bigger entity that is designed to be fundamentally racist. And you have to now not just be in that space, but really work on, you know, um, just, just reconstructing the way it's been built. And listening to him talk, it did hurt more to have a brother sit up there and tell us like, you know, to, to try to give reason for it, right? And make it, and try to rationalize what happened. And it's just, there's no way to rationalize it. And actually, I felt like he sounded very insensitive. And I felt like he was just making excuses and trying to say, but I'm not making excuses, right? And just hearing them describe and talk about the family next door, right? Who still lived. You know, it was a father with a wife that was pregnant and a son and a, a child. And it was just kind of like, okay, but Brianna's dead. So it's just, it, it just hurts. And, and to Eric's point of um, them softening the blow as far as um, releasing that settlement just a week ago, we already knew this was coming. That's why we, none of us were shocked because they started putting barricades outside, preparing for protesters early in the morning, right? So they already knew. And then they also did the settlement so they they've been knew this was going to happen and so um you know brett hankinson hankinson the um officer that was charged you know he's looking at one to five years and i don't even expect him to get jail time honestly i don't expect him to get five years but i don't i don't think he'll get jail time um so uh, i agree i don't think no go ahead no no go ahead i'm finished finish now I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about the actors. I mean the actors and stuff. So you can say your response. Sorry. Oh, I, I was I was just gonna say um I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but I was telling uh, Anthony about it. There's a, a short documentary on Hulu and uh, with the um you know the the in depth details regarding this case. And when I heard some of the details, like I was shocked that we've even taken this long to come up with any type of charges. Um, the no knock warrant wasn't even really for her place. It was for another residence where they were searching for her ex-boyfriend. But since they threw her address in there as well, they were, they were able somehow to finesse a no knock warrant for her house, even though it wasn't his known residence. He was just known to to hang out there from time to time when they dated at one point, ex-boyfriend was also arrested. The ex-boyfriend was also arrested an hour before they kicked in her door. So there was no need to even go to her house. You had already arrested the gentleman you were looking for. Yet, for whatever reason, these cops still executed a no-knock warrant under the, wow. the pretenses of there might be drugs in the home, right? So they break down the door. They get into the shootout with the boyfriend. Bri- Brianna gets shot. She never gets removed from the apartment. She never receives medical attention. She dies in her own apartment. Yet they escort the boyfriend out and arrest him. And during all this time, the cops still never searched the residence. They, so there was no justification for what they did. So my, my thing is... 
you want to throw out wanton endangerment and say, oh, the, the neighbors were, were, you know, put in, in, in harm's way. Well, Breonna Taylor and her boyfriend were put in harm's way as well because there was no reason for you to knock down their door if you had arrested who you were looking for. Yeah, and I think there was, there was no reason to proceed. The the so if even if you want to, you know, the the wanton suit, whatever charges they just making up just to say something, right? So there's no no nobody's responsible for the negligence to where you had arrested the person you were looking for an hour before you kicked in Breonna Taylor's door. So no, so there's no negligence of anything involved, nothing that nobody else should have been brought up on any type of type of charges. You know, it, it, it's sickening. Um, so to touch on what Eric said, I think that was the most heartbreaking thing that I had found out. Cause you know, we just, to your point, just like you're reading more and more things throughout over the months and learning more details was to find out that she did not receive medical attention. And I think the irony of a 26 year old woman who, de who devoted her life to be an EMT worker, to not be able to receive medical treatment in her time of need, in her time of literally before she died, I think that's disgusting. And, it, and it's, this case was so unique because of not only that she was just laying in bed, you know, literally innocent, not doing anything. So there was no, oh, did she reach for a gun or did she do this? No, they they barged into her home. But also the fact that what she did for a living as an EMT worker, it's like she, you know what I mean? Like she literally saved other people's lives. And this is what she did so for her not to receive medical attention just speaks on an, another way that she was just disrespected. Um, and I just wanted to, to go over LeBron James. He is someone that has been such a voice for a long time, but in particular in this case, um, and him, I think having a young daughter as well, and him just speaking about his love for black women, um, he made some tweets and said, the most disrespected person on the earth is a black woman. Uh, I promise you I'll do my best to change this as much as I can and even more. Love to you queens all over this country and beyond. So we seen, um, you know, when this news broke, there were reports that the entire Lakers team had the news on blasting that they were intensely watching, waiting for what was happening. And they, a lot of them just um, were very emotional. And Stephen A. Smith, um, you know, spoke last night and said his closing remarks. It was very powerful. Uh, and I thought it was very interesting because he opened up his remarks quoting, you know, Laura Ingram, who we all can't stand um, and her remarks of them being told shut up and dribble. And he basically spoke and said, you guys question why these athletes, um, NBA, NFL, et cetera, use their, why these stars use their platforms to speak on the plight of African-Americans. It's because of situations like this. And thank God for them speaking up. Thank God for them bringing awareness. And even that still didn't get her justice. So I thought um, that if you guys didn't check that out, definitely watch it. It was very powerful, his words. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just insane. I'm happy that these influencers and celebrities are using their platforms to speak on this. And I want to say, too, uh, um, you know, in, in regards to what Stephen A said, if, you know, the, the result of that being the athletes around around the globe really using their platform. But the other thing that is going to come out of that as well, and which now we're starting to see even more, you know, at some point, you know, people people get tired of getting beat down, and you're going to see instances like what happened with the with the protest right after that that decision came out, and two officers were shot, um, you know, and a couple of weeks ago we had officers shot in L.A., and you know what I mean. So something something's got to get done because. You know, it, it, it's going to get get worse before before it gets better if somebody yeah. doesn't doesn't step in, and it doesn't help that the person who's supposed to be running this country is probably one of the most divisive people in this country. And 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 to speak on Trump real quick, I don't really like to even give him much attention or time. That's why I ain't give him. I ain't, saying his name. I ain't giving him clout. Yeah, he spoke on this situation, and it was just so he applauded. You know, he applauded um, the attorney general, uh, Daniel Cameron, about what he said. And he, he's doing an excellent job handling it. And I thought that was just... He's a Republican, just, that's why. He's a, he's a Republican. Yeah, he's, at, he's at one of Trump's rallies. That's why. It's just crazy how he, instead of acknowledging 
Breonna Taylor and her family and even like even making that moment about, you know, just really her and about just what, you know, what happened to this 26 year old, very young, young girl. He decided to say he loves, oh, he's a rock star. He's a rock star. It's just like, what? Like, this is not real. So super insensitive. I don't expect him to care. You know, any anytime I, I see him speak on anything that has to do with any just African-American issues, anything like that, he sounds so insincere. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I don't, I don't expect anything, anything better from him. And it's just, it's just sad um, that that's what we have at the, at the forefront of this country right now. And it's even, you know, more reason why, uh, you know, we need to get out and vote this November because we need to get that, that divisive, sexist, racist. We need to get all of that out the office. Somebody got to go up in there with the sage before the next president come in. Just get all that out of uh, all that spirits out of there. You know what I'm saying? So we can we can move on from this and, and and try to 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 really make the changes that's necessary in this country. Shout out to LeBron, Stephen A. Uh, Lamar Jackson. You know he, he he said some some things. Just just the players in general, the athletes. I'm, I'm so proud of them. Uh, for for stepping up and, and speaking out using their platform. Shout out to to Tyron Woodley, man. Um, you know he lost his fight this past weekend. He had a, he had a UFC fight which he lost uh, TKO. He got an injury. Um, but he but before the fight, his the entire press conference was Black Lives Matter. Any yeah. question I was asking was Black Lives Matter. Um, you guys can check it out on my Instagram. The video I, I reposted the video on my Instagram uh, for you guys at, at home. But, you know, shout out to all of the athletes that have been stepping up um, because it's definitely not a situation. It ain't, ain't going to be no shut up and dribble. Ain't going to be no shut up and box, no shut up and throw a football, no shut up and play tennis. You know, shout yeah. out to, to Naomi Osaka. You know, no. These athletes are doing what they're supposed to do. They're following the footsteps of, of the, the Bill Russells, the Kareems, the Muhammad Ali's. You know, like yeah. shout, shout out to these guys for not being afraid to use their platforms. Yes. And, you know, I want to continue just picking up LeBron James. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ. And you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk.